Origin 2023. Wow, this was an amazing film. I knew nothing about it when I walked into the cinema. It's a biographical drama based on a book by Isabel Wilkerson and a lot of it is about her life, the lead up to writing what is an absolutely amazing book. So the story starts with the killing of Trayvon Martin, which happened in 2012. This is one of many awful cases and the circumstances which Isabel wants to explore. It stars Ingenue Ellis Taylor as Isabel. She writes for a living. She's got an elderly mother who is maybe going into her home. Her husband, played by John Bernthal, is really supportive and we get to see a backstory of how they met. The theory ultimately comes down to, in the title of the book, Cast, The Origin of Our Discontents. And it's a book I'd really like to read. I find reading difficult these days. There are a few books I'd like to read, getting around to finding the time, spending time, enough time reading to make a dent in books. That's my difficulty and I don't know if that's down to neurodiversity or the way modern and life is. Somehow I need to change that I think. I like writing as well and I think to be a good writer you need to be a good reader. So yeah well she's a writer and this is why I want to Isabel immediately. She faces tragedies at the start of the film and there's this whole thing about Trevor Martin who is shot by a Mexican or half Mexican so there's complications and that's why I think Isabel thinks outside the box and this is where it really is amazing because because the caste system explains a lot. One of the caste systems that perhaps most people are familiar with is on the Indian subcontinent, the Dalit. Now, there used to be another word to describe them, and I'm not going to use it because I think it may be a slur. Let's call it the U word. I mean, I want to avoid all slurs. I want to make this a really life-affirming channel. I want to learn from people, so if I do make mistakes about anything, your feedback, constructive feedback, is always welcome things that will help me improve and make better content. Anyway, Isabel's idea is like a paradigm shift. She has to deal with grief and this grief is dealt with in silent moments, autumnal visions, leaves falling. I guess that's probably the layers of torment that she's suffering at that time. And she's to some extent got writer's block. She's trying to link various things like Trayvon Martin and much of modern day racism and the problems that have occurred in other parts of the world, such as Nazi Germany in the 30s and in the Second World War, the way Jews were persecuted and so many other minorities. And so she's coming up with a theory for marginalisation. <sighs> Amazing. Anyone in a marginalised group hopefully can see parallels with other marginalised groups. I mean, when you see people being persecuted, when you see people being punched down upon by those in charge, the authorities, the political leaders, this is where caste system, as a much broader term than what happens in India, Isabel visits India, and there's so many things she finds out there. The Dalit can never escape from the life mapped out for them, and that is what's so doubly terrifying. If you're in a minority Minority, a persecuted minority, you cannot escape, you cannot aspire to do better. Future generations will follow your path because you are Dalit and generationally Dalit. I mean, generational trauma written systematically into society. Well, wow, it's so focused by my mind. It's set off light bulbs. Some of the passages that she comes up with about the persecution, about the way all of the marginalised groups are oppressed by the system. We need to change our way of thinking. One of the points is when she talks to her mother. Her mother makes a point about Trevor Martin not behaving in the correct way. And that draws parallel with something I read on threads the other day by a trans woman. I haven't cleared it with her, so I won't mention her name, but she's an awesome campaigner. And she mentioned about how trans women and trans men and non-binary, all trans people, they don't owe their behaviour to you. They deserve respect for being themselves, ultimately. And it's not the behaviour that makes them acceptable. And they are 
acceptable. Now, the whole point with Trevor Martin, he was walking through a wealthy suburb and he realised that a motorist was following him and we hear the emergency phone call, the 911 call, in which the caller is saying that this young lad, Trayvon, 17 years old, is behaving suspiciously. He's just walking through the neighbourhood. I think he pulls up his hood at some point. He takes his hood down. He starts to run at some point because he's intimidated. And this is it. This is where the genius of matching that up with what happened in Nazi Germany and what happened in slavery, the time of the Civil War in the USA and what's happening in India. I mean, she's walking through this busy street trying to cross a road and there's absolute organised chaos. I mean, trying to cross the street. There's layers of cars and people and they're all moving slowly, but how people don't get hit more often than they do, how there aren't more collisions, I just don't know. There's just so much in this film, but there's this there's statues there that are caged, it's a metal cage to protect the statue from being vandalised. In India, there's wide divisions, the car system. There's just absolutely so much in this film. How to link ideas. The Daleks have to clean up the sewers and they... It's just horrendous what they have to put up with. And you see them covered head to toe in filth. One of the quotes in the film is about relationships breaking. Not all relationships break. But to break the caste system would be so freeing for everyone. As someone quoted on International Women's Day, no one's free until everyone's free. And there are so many women suffering around the world. There are so many marginalised groups in the LGBTQ community. Everyone needs to feel free and protected and not marginalised. Whichever element of life, and it's true of ethnicity, it's true of disability, it's true of every way that we get marginalised as human beings. Oh gosh, there was this incident from a swimming pool from 1951 where this young black lad was separated from his friends and the only way he was allowed in this pool, well, I think I won't say much more, but see the scene in this film, it's heartbreaking. There are just so many powerful moments. Isabel talks to this repair worker who comes to Isabel's house and he's wearing a MAGA hat, Make America Great Again. And one of the things I liked about this was that this repair worker, even though it feels like it could be a real tribal moment, and yet she starts a conversation that establishes a link in their humanity. It's moments like that. If there are ways of breaking through the divides in our society and challenging hate, there is so much hatred at present. You see it so often on social media, so much division. And to find bridges, to build bridges, and to find the common ground, the sort of thing that Jo Cox talked about in her maiden speech. She was the MP who murdered just a week before the EU referendum, the Brexit vote. She said we have more in common than that which divides us. I thought this moment by Isabel fell into this category as well. She found a way of connecting as a human with someone who may well have had opposing views. I love this film. I'm going to give it 9.5 out of 10. I implore you to see it. I'd love to know what you think about it. Please like if you like this video. Thanks if you subscribe. I'd love to find out what you think and hope to see you again soon. Bye for now. Thank you.